Nicole. Ciao, everyone. I'm Esther. Alfred here. How are you? <laughs> you, me, and Sicily. And welcome to this chat. We've got so much to talk to you about, including Opera de Pupi. And we've got tours to talk to you about and travel tips. Uh, but first, welcome to this channel or welcome back to this channel if uh, you've been enjoying our video. So, Alfred, let's talk about Opera de Pupi, the puppets, uh, Sicilian puppets, which is such a beautiful tradition here in Sicily. It's something that's passed on from family to family. And the performances, I saw one performance in Castellamare a few years ago, and they're intense. They're theatrical, they're beautifully organized, right? And most of them are based on old uh, stories and traditions and also two famous poems, right? A French poem and an Italian poem, right, Alfred? First of all, it's misnamed because they're really not puppets, they're marionettes. For some reason, they call them puppets. A puppet is the thing you put on your hand, you know, like yeah. a sock. Uh, and yes, they are very, 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 uh, it's a, it was a 19th century phenomenon in Sicily where it was like really popular. And then the 20th century, it kind of petered out the first half of the 20th century. And by the middle of the last century, the 20th, 1950s or whatever, because of TV, it was a dying form. But puppetry and marionettery, so to speak, has been around since the days of the ancient Greeks, Esther. It's been, you know, a long time. It started becoming really popular in Spain and then in France, and then it came down to Sicily. And most of the time it's based on uh, two poems. One of them, uh, the song of Roland, and the other one is Orlando Furioso, the angry Orlando, right? And these are, the, it, in fact, by the way, the Orlando Furioso is a national treasure, right? It was written in the 1500s. And still a lot of things are based on that play, on that poem. Uh, for instance, Dolce Gabbana uses uh, those characters all the time for their clothing items and other apparel. Uh, the tomato paste, the tomato sauce we use has some of those pictures on there. Uh, so it is a tradition and it is a history that is still alive today. You know, the puppetry uh, art is an art that usually is, for me, is, is in the family, okay? Now the areas that were really popular and still are to this day are the Palermo area and the Catania area. Those are two of the, two of the major centers and also Messina. We're very fortunate where we live. The next town over is called Acireale. And there is some terrific family that, uh, families that have passed down the art of puppetry making or uh, marionette making from time to time. When we go down to the, the festivals downtown over here, we see them. They're on display. Uh, they're huge. Some of the big ones in uh, Sicily, they're, they're gigantic, okay? And shops sell them. Still sell Yeah, them. they sell them. We sold so many in the States. I imported... We used to have three sizes, uh, small, medium, and large. Uh, and the large ones we had would really be like not really large compared to some of the ones that we see at some of the shops. They're, they're literally three feet uh, tall. And you need more than one person to make them. You need the woodworker, and then you also need the clothier. Yeah. And of course, Sicily has today the best, uh, well, they call them puppet masters, the guys that control the puppetry and so forth. Yeah, and the um, the puppets have armored on them. Some of them depict uh, knights. Some of them depicts the Saracens or the Moors. Some of them depict women wearing beautiful medieval costumes. They're handmade and very, very terrific. You know, uh, in, I remember in high school, we had to translate as a senior in because I took all, I took a lot, many years of French. We had to uh, translate the Song of Roland, the Chanson de Roland, uh, from French to English, and that really was the initial influence of the stories, the stories about Charlemagne and the invasion and conquest by the Muslims in Spain, and how the Franks came and moved them down, and how Roland died blowing his trumpet of warning, uh, you know, as the as Charlemagne was going back to France. It's a wonderful story, full of action, adventure, betrayal, a lot of betrayal. Yeah, I mean, these are yeah, stories this, that are fun, they're fundamental messages, right? Of right. freedom, justice, love, humor, yeah. chivalry. These are really big themes that were very popular. That's why they became so popular here in Sicily, because these are themes that people really enjoyed. Roland 
in France and Orlando are pretty much the same person. Okay, uh, it's the same the same type of a character. He was like the hero, but there's there's also other many other heroes. Charlemagne, for example, why is Charlemagne so popular in um, puppetry here? Uh, Carlo Magno, as he was called, mm -hmm. is because of the Song of Roland. Okay, so um, and then, of course, the Spanish. There was another uh, one called Le Cid or El Cid, which we also had to translate, by the way, which was, you know, also very heroic uh, in nature. But Rome really started the whole business, ancient Rome, actually, mm -hmm. of using puppetry and uh, puppets as political statements because the puppets really weren't speaking. Uh, I mean, the, the people who, the voices weren't speaking, it was the puppet speaking. So you could make a lot of political commentary. It's kind of like today watching, you know, the cable news stations, those people that pretty much like So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we don't talk politics here on this show. No, that's not politics. Uh, okay, but no. really it was also a way to pass down tradition and also during the times when people were illiterate, it was a great way to tell history and tradition and a great event, you know, one of these uh, puppet shows about two, three hours. So you really have to invest some time, but boy, are they entertaining. Now it is so important. You know, I mentioned before Dolce Gabbana and uh, people use those themes all the time, but also the themes from um, the uh, Orlando Furioso are on Sicilian carts, right? They're painted on the side panels of Sicilian carts. And we did an entire episode on Sicilian carts, uh, taking a look at the difference between the ones from Palermo and the ones from Catania. The colors are different, the, um, the sizes and the structure of the side panels are different, but always telling, recounting the story of Orlando. Listen, uh, as far as any uh, extracurricular study, or research. I, I want to give you a couple of things. Number one, you ought to you ought to uh, Google the Caliphate of Cordoba, Cordoba in Spain. Okay, the great Muslim Caliphate that was in existence, where in a lot of the Muslim invaders of Sicily were the exact same Muslim invaders in Cordoba. In Cordoba, next with Palermo and Constantinople for several hundred years, that Sultanate was just unbelievably beautiful and powerful and so forth. But the relationship historically uh, between Spain, the North African Muslims and Sicily is really interconnected. So I think that's one of the things you ought to look at. And Orlando Furioso, look it up, yep. great stuff. And also, All wait right. a minute, excuse me, one mm -hmm. more thing, okay. Did I interrupt you or did you interrupt <laughs> me? Go ahead. Okay, we have this new thing now. I'll go. We have a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> Drink just, your drink. I'm busting the chops. No, no. Uh, the Song of Roland. Okay, you ought to Google that, and and from that Google information, it'll take you also to some terrific video work that folks have done online. And believe it or not, they're still making it. And there's beautiful music. Yeah. Vivaldi's done stuff. There's a whole bunch of people. Handel has done One stuff. One of the most important Italian pieces of work. So the make sure Song you do. of Roland is the. It's like the midnight ride of Paul no, Revere. That's, is, fr that's French. No. And to the French to is the what French. I'm saying. It's a cultural Orlando. sin qua non, as and they say. And for the Italians, Orlando Furioso is one of the most important pieces. I always thought that E Cumbari, E Cumbari, <laughs> Sua Suna, I thought that was like important. All right, so anyway. All right, let's say hello to some people and then we're going to talk a little bit about tours and tips for when to come and what to do here in Sicily. Uh, Christine with Olive Tree Memorial is here. I saw Manny Palazzo earlier. Uh, let's see, uh, we've got Saluti da Walpole, New Hampshire. Peter Scapoletti, nice to see you. Vacation starts this afternoon to get my garden planted. Awesome, I wanna know what you're planting. Uh, hello, Helen. Uh, Hi, Helen. Tony Patty's here. Let's see. Ciao, Joe. Hello from Michelle and Joe in New Jersey. And that's the town that I still can't pronounce. Tim's going to the 90s. My friend Stefania is here. What about Catania. me? She's my friend, too. 
our friend Ian mm. Don. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's great. Tony has an Orlando Furioso. Marionette. Marionette. Bravo. Uh, Nancy Marotti. Okay. So Maria is also here. Aldina, buongiorno from Vancouver. Life is slowly returning to normal here. We're not allowed to dine inside restaurants and they're predicting the mask will be optional after July. That's good. So uh, June 1st, we're supposed to be able to eat inside. Right now, it's just outside. We can't so eat in the house? We can eat in the house. You just said we can't eat inside. When we go out to restaurants. Where were we today? Tell them where we were today, Esther. Where, were they? where did we go this morning? Wait a second. I was okay. Helen says, Alfred, uh, you are giving me more to study. I know nothing of Roland and Charlemagne. Charlemagne was like I the, I would say you know, you have look to read Orlando. Him. Roland was the French one. Orlando Furioso should be the one. I think you have to go Roland first myself, but what do I know? I'm just an A student. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she went to UMass. What can I say? Okay. Oh, thank you for my necklace, Jim Ingram. You know that, Jimmy. Well, uh, you by just, the way, uh, uh, yeah, you I interrupted went to me my, again. Did you, just, right. did you just insult my alma mater? UMass? You mean Zoomass? And by Zoom the way, mass. where did I go to grad school? Where? Chow Su. You don't know? Jim Ingram, look at that beautiful necklace that you sent. Everybody, Jimmy sent this necklace uh, to Esther. She hasn't took taken it off I love since it. she put it on. She took a shower with it and... and you see the gold that didn't come off. I thought it was fake gold, but it must be real gold. Thank you, Jimmy. It's great. I like to see her happy. But where do we go today, Esther? Where did we go? Catania. We went to Catania. Again. We've been there like three times in the last couple. Oh, yeah. We finally had uh, dinner out. We had dinner out. I, Anne Marie Watt, Mike Watt, Esther and I went out to dinner. It was their anniversary. We went to, uh, uh, where did we go? Antique Cecilia. One of our favorite restaurants. And Anne Marie and I had the pasta with the natto di sepia, which I have to say to you, was just loaded with cuttlefish. You know, that's the ink with the squid ink. And she, I couldn't finish it. She gave, they gave us so much. Mike yeah. had the risotto, the seafood risotto that looked Fantastic. killer. You had, what did you have? Calamari. You calamari. Got, did you have the uh, arrosto? Calamari yes. arrosto. Yep. And my favorite zuppa di cozzi. And the zuppa di cozzi. And it was just like, it was one of those meals after you ate, you were fully satisfied. Yeah. And the best part about it was the wait staff there, who we know because we send a lot of clients there, they were so happy to see us. It's like, yeah. oh, my God, this is a good sign. And we're catching up with the kids because they yeah. follow us on Facebook, but they don't post stuff about their kids. So they're showing me pictures of their kids. And one of them is pregnant again. So that was such a fun little pe two kids during COVID. Can you imagine that? Right right in the P right in University Square in, Piazza, in the Piazza there on Via uh, Etna. There's this gal that over the years I've gotten to be friendly with. She's the one that hands out the flyers that say, mm -hmm. say go to this restaurant, okay? And she gets a few coins. I don't know what the hell they pay for her. But we found this one on our own, not through her. You interrupted me. That's three <laughs> times. But right. I'm correcting you, honey. No. Okay. But anyways, she um, she told me as I was leaving, she says, you know, I think the tourist season is coming back. And I says, why? And she said, because you two guys are here with clients. She thought that Mike and Anne-Marie yeah. were our clients. So it's a good thing that, um, we, you know, it seems like it's coming back, folks. That's all I want to say. Um, Vermont Cannoli, I was just reading about the Pupi di Sicilia, so I really mm, appreciate it. Yeah. So can you also show on the Carrozza Siciliana? You uh, mean Caretti Siciliana? Caretti. We did one. We are definitely. Uh, Manny wants to know what you're drinking. Today I'm drinking a vodka tonic. I'll tell you the truth. Um, the vodka uh, is, in the, in the nice weather like this, I like to drink the vodka. And today was just a good thing. But we're using, we're using the Sicilian lemon squirt. It's like those little yellow things with this, with the orange, uh, the lemon juice, and it's pretty good with that squirt stuff. I kind of like it. She doesn't think I should use it, but I think his it's cat away. His cat I will away, New not Jersey. That's forget New that. Yeah. His cat away. Thank yeah. you for that. All right, I want to know where you guys are watching from. Sal and I love Catania, praying to come back very soon. So that's Catania's a perfect, a town. perfect town. segue. Perfect, perfect segue. So we had this. I'll put peep in your mouth. <laughs> Thank hey, Jim, you, Jim, actually, you want to know something? Jimmy sent me some peeps. They're on a stick. And I actually had, last night, I actually ate them, okay? 
And I want to say something about the peeps. I think they're changing the, the flavor now. Really? They, yeah, they didn't taste like... They taste Maybe like, the ones on the stick. The different. ones on the stick taste different, but they were delicious. And I, I really want to thank Jimmy. But you didn't send me... I thought you were going to give me some money. You said you were going to put a 50 in there, Jim. <laughs> One All right, way, on brother. that note... Uh, I talked to you about the two. You were so, okay, so we are going to restart our private tours uh, whenever people are ready to come uh, and we are planning a group tour in October. So that's the dates are gonna be about mid October, uh, nine days. And we'll put that on our website soon. Christina's here, so we'll have all the information. But if you guys need anything, message me on Facebook or email me. Uh, I think my email is attached to this YouTube. So uh, that is very, very exciting. And we're hoping to book a few private tours here and there. Uh, well, first of all, our first group tour, we, we're we closing them at six travelers. Okay? That's sold out. That's sold out. The first one, which is the first two two weeks. So we decided we're going to have another one uh, the second two weeks, right around the second two weeks of October for the same price and everything. Um, and we're looking for people for that one as well. And then the other one that we'll do, if there's sufficient interest, is a Christmas tour. Now, we're... Per the, per the EU regulations, you either have to be vaccinated or you have to have the COVID antibodies. Am I correct in saying that? You have to have either proof of, of a vaccine, yeah. proof that you have the antibodies or a test done. And let me just answer Vermont Canale. Do you know that people from the USA can come to Sicily without quarantine? Yes. But, but you still have to show those things yeah. for sure. You have to show those things. And... Uh, so, and also in Christmas, now we'll do private work. Her and I will do private work uh, the month of November and in September. So if you're coming in November or if you're coming in September and you want Esther to escort you or you want me to drive you around or whatever or something Entertain like that. Entertain you with your wisdom. Entertain you with my wisdom. <laughs> then we're very, you know, that's where, you know, we'll, we'll help you out there as best we can. So Contact couple, Esther. Contact so a Esther. couple of uh, tips on that. Um, you know, someone said to me that they lost their, uh, their uh, proof that they got vaccinated. Uh, make sure you get some other test or try and contact uh, whoever you get vaccinated to give you another copy. And try to make sure to have those pieces of paper translated to Italian. I strongly suggest that. We haven't heard any trouble, but it's it's just something to keep an eye on. The best thing to do is to take a photocopy of them on your on your cell phone. Take a picture of them, but get it translated. It doesn't have to be, you know, certified or anything like that, but get it translated uh, and carry a photocopy with you, okay? We don't know exactly what's going to happen right now other than the fact that things are reopening, and I can't stress that enough. So, uh, Italy is now 50% vaccinated, okay? So the herd, whatever that herd immunity thing, is not far away, okay? So this, these are very positive signs. And Esther and I are very, you're positive, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm very positive about, about that. that. Uh, Kiara, child, did you get Granita? You know what? A few weeks ago when, or when we went to Yellow Zone, I was like, we need to get Granita first and foremost. So we had uh, Granita and we brought it home. But I'm wondering, you guys, what's your favorite uh, flavor of granita? Right now, they're just coming out. And so the summer flavors are a few weeks away. There's no Jelsey yet. Uh, there's no mulberry. Uh, I've seen some strawberry. There's no peach yet. What flavor are you? Oh, ananas. Ananas, Alfred. Mm. You love that, the mm -mm. pineapple. Or the melon. Mm -mm. Which one? I'm a more traditional guy. Give me almond. I want oh, almond. Oh, the toasted or else almond. The, or if it's really hot, I like lemon. Look, give me those two. Or in the morning, coffee. Coffee and, and, and almond is the best combination for me in the morning. And maybe uh, the cantaloupe. I like the cantaloupe flavor. The maloney. Maloney is very, very good, too. So these, these guys and are And you know what out. I love going to Bam Bar? Because they have... In Tarmina. In Tarmina. Uh, because they have the granita year round and they always make seasonal fruit. So sometimes they have figs, sometimes they have pico de India, uh, which is prickly pear, very unique stuff. But even around here, there's a lot of great uh, granita flavors. I remember a couple of years ago when we went to the granita festival in Acciariale, I had one and I actually voted for it as the most flavorful. It was made from rose petals. It, it, some, some competitors from Brazil came 
and it was made from rose petals. And man, I'll tell you what. That was a great one, yeah. Oh. Oh. During the Granita Festival, naturally, yeah. Alex. Mandala and pistachio, you know what? Pistachio, yeah, mandala, too. Pistachio Helen, sure. let me tell you that if you are lactose intolerant, Granita is 100% milk free. It's made with ice and whatever the nuts or fruits uh, that they have. So that's a great thing. Speaking about. And a brioche on the side, excuse me. Speaking about lactose free, okay? A couple of weeks ago, Esther brought me some some brie, okay, from our place that we like called Lytle. It's an international market, and it was delicious. So I said to her, you know, can you buy some more when I, when I ran out? So she brought me, you know, another package, exact same one as the first one, equally as delicious. Yesterday I was reading it, and the brie was lactose-free. Yeah. I was, as they say over here, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> the Italian version, by the way, this was a German one the Italian version of brie the guy who makes the brie from Italy he should be arrested for impersonating what was the difference maker. it I'll, I'll, I'll give you the word in Latin okay here's the word in pig Latin it oxade okay <laughs> that's how bad it was it really oxade if you know what I mean it was terrible okay Kiara do you guys do day trips like a winery too Yes. yes. Oh, so yeah. in fact, in our little basket of goodies, as I like to call it, we have vineyards, we have a heart museum, we have boat rides, we now have a golf course that we can take people to. What other extras? Um, we do a ricotta tasting. Well, what are we going to do for our October trip? Tell the people what cooking we're going to do for demos. Our, where are we going for our so October trip? So the answer trip? is yes. Let me just do this. Atlantis Graphics and Web Design Ireland. <laughs> now it's the good news. Just put a deposit on a house in Messina. Bravo. That's great. Okay. Okay, Esther. Wait a second. Where are we going? Hello, everyone from Austin. Thanks for all the rain. Thanks to all the rain we've been having. All the creeks are full here. Good. Good to know. Okay, delicious granita. Yes, with brioche for breakfast. My parents. There's would nothing have better it. than that. A brioche, a brioche and granita in the morning. People say what? What? I'll tell you what. There aren't any diners here. There are no IHOPs. You can't get. <laughs> you can't get. You know, pancakes and eggs and maybe you could, but I don't know where. Maybe in a hotel and the the when I mean, you go to the hotel and get them, the eggs are scrambled and runny. I think they're made with the packaged stuff. They're awful, but nothing like a granita. And, a and you know what we learned um, from our, our friend Rosario Sadio at that Rosario um, Faracci is that this is actually a form a cultural tradition here to have breakfast, um, having a granita or a brioche, and then you meet for a meeting to get a granita. And then this was so funny. He said. When you're just starting to date someone and you want to get to know them, you just go and get a coffee, right? The second step, if you kind of like them, then you go for a granita because it takes a little bit longer. And then the third time you go, right? Wait you, a you share the spoon the, and you can taste the other the one's granita. The, the second time you each get your own granita. Right. And then, and then the third time you share one. And then the fourth time you could slide under the table if you want. This is the story. I <laughs> That's I'm, your story. <laughs> I don't know what you were. Uh, uh, but it's, you know what's really cool too? I'm starting to see the Granita trucks, right? They drive around in the neighborhood. Are, those, they beep and they have the Granita or the, the Gelato. I those, love that. Those three wheeled uh, vehicles, which I always said to her. Up there. Up there. I always right. I always wanted to be one of those guys. I wanted to buy one of those little trucks. I'd be so happy. Go drive around Lawrence with my bulletproof armor on and sell Bonita. <laughs> Before I forget, can I make something? Can I make another announcement? Yeah. Don't forget, we talked about our trips. Okay. Now Alfred's gonna talk about our private, what's it called? Membership group. Explain <laughs> it to them. We we need Three more to get 60. 
It's a dollar and ninety nine cents a month. Go ahead. Now you 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 become a member of our You Me and Sicily YouTube, and I post a little bit of extra stuff there. But it's really just a small way to support this channel and keep us going. And how do they? How do they? And join? by how, the way, how do they you join? will still get all the free videos, all the free episodes. We come here to you uh, free of charge every time. It's just a little bit of way to support. So when you came on here, you probably had a little join button, so you hit that. By the way. In case you're not, make sure you subscribe also to this channel and share with friends. Fred McNeil, we've missed Hi, you. We How missed you on your last. Wow, long time no see. How you been? Uh, hello from Ann Arbor. Glad to, uh, to hear Italy's reopening. Looking forward to taking our honeymoon, which was postponed from over a year and a half. Wonderful. Where are you going to go? Let me know. Let me talk about uh, his post postponements for a second. My kids will... My kids did not believe that Sicilians have granita for breakfast with brioche until I brought them to Sicily. Yeah. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, I want to talk about postponements and how you guys can help uh, if you have another tour operator and so forth. Let them know as soon as possible when you want to, like say, for example, you've deferred your trip and so forth. Let them know because the airlines are basically finagling the bagel right now. Yeah. As, as Esther was telling me before the broadcast today, one of the airlines, I'm not going to mention who it yeah. is, is char was charging or is charging a thousand dollars to get from Palermo for some flights from Rome to Palermo. Okay. Now, the owners of that airline should be. Ashamed. As Cicero would say, beaten, stripped, <laughs> and sent naked into the woods. Okay? They really should because they're profiteering. Just like the people who in the United States of America are getting, I don't know, $100 for a piece of sheetrock. They're profiteering right now off of your back and my back. And we have to call that to attention. And the best way to do it is to get and see what the story is with your trip that you're going to plan here. I think that's the most important thing to do. Um, Vermont Cannoli, love that, Italian government website states that in addition to having documents that you must book a COVID-free flight on Delta Alitalia to avoid quarantine, I hope this will change. I'm sure it will. And I, and I already saw that some um, new flights were starting to be available. And it's, and it's all starting to crystallize now with this green pass uh, that they're going to be rolling out. Um, uh, all good, Al. I was getting loads of work done in my That's apartment. That's good, Fred. Good. Glad to hear that. We were worried about you. That's all. Uh, when we were looking, there were very inexpensive flights from the UK to Sicily. Yeah, good. I, I paid uh, eight hundred dollars going back and forth to Boston. Mm -hmm. Although they just moved me, they just sent me an email today and say you wanted to leave on the thirty first of July. Well, guess what? You can't yet leave the next day on August first. But I paid eight hundred dollars with extended leg room in the economy class yeah so i remember in previous years i used to pay 1500 bucks for tickets so i, I was selling to esther I said, you know esther the, the tickets are pretty they're not that expensive nancy has a good question um our question please when you depart the u.s for residence in sicily did you need to keep a u.s address for your medicare etc you know what you want to know something i don't tell i don't tell them what i'm doing i have medicare Okay. All I know is they whack me every single month, and they take money out of my Medicare. I don't, I don't spend a nickel in the United States, but I have Medicare. I have Social Security, and I have Medicare. I don't tell them where I'm going. Excuse me, Esther. Where I'm going, I don't want the government to know, either government, only what is legally required. Okay, because as it's getting worse and worse and worse, they want to know everything. Pretty soon, they're going to put a freaking microchip in my brain. I'm going to resist that as long as possible. But you do want to have uh, some kind of address to send stuff to. Buonasera, Francesco. <laughs> Here's our neighbor. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Salute tutti. Ciao. Ciao, Bedu. Ora vai per cena. Let me finish answering the question okay. about having an address. Okay. Ciao. <laughs> What I do have is I have a United States address. I have a legal address in the United States, okay? And my daughter Jennifer will periodically forward to me anything that is pertinent, okay? I'll go on Zoom with her and I'll say, if there's 25 pieces of mail, 24 of them are junk and we can them. 
But if there's one that's important, I'll have her send it to me in a courier or something like that. But that's how I do it. And I've done it for 20 years. And if I, God gives me the, the strength to live another 20 years, I'll continue on doing it. That's how I do it. The reason for the high prices flights to Italy is that they're taking advantage because COVID free flights don't go to Sicily. Musa meant she was up in arms today, let me tell you. Um, Disgrace. Vermont, Disgraceful. As I've been checking the airfields for the fog, there hasn't been an extra quarant. Sure quarantine. There's supposed to be an extra quarantine or something like that. All right. Uh, so some other tips uh, coming here uh, to Sicily. Uh, when are the good times? When are the best times to come? For us, for, this for year. me, for this year? no, for always, in case people are planning for 2022, because I know a lot of people are still a little bit yeah. iffy and they're looking in 2022. I would say starting in April, May is fantastic to come here in Sicily. If you want to go to the beach and enjoy the water, uh, June is great. July, it gets a little bit hot. Now, if you're going to mountain town and you don't want to go on the beaches, that's fine. I would say... The uh, last two weeks in August, stay away, Ferragosto. Uh, September is fantastic. No, October is fantastic. There's lots going on. The fall foods are out. November, and then December is just not very touristy. So if you're looking to avoid other tourists, I'm not sure how it's going to be this year, but if you are looking to avoid tourists, December is a great time to come. We're going to have in next 2022 we're going to have a regularly scheduled um east coast uh tour okay the only thing we're doing different is we're, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna close them up at six eight or ten people maximum because mm -hmm. uh, i tell i was telling us listen you know let's not get over rambunctious here let's let's try six and then if, if there's no problems let's try eight then if there's no problems we'll stop it at 10 even though our bus can hold 17 people so we'll have we'll have a regular east coast one that features the great places over here Tamina, catania or teacher in syracuse we go to where else do we go? I don't even can't even think of where, where else we go. Achi we we I, do the Etna towns, the Etna, Etna Vineyard. We do Sicilian cart. We do yeah. a cooking demo. Um, uh, in May we go to Noto for the flower festival. Right. And the other big thing that I want to tell you guys that if you have an ancestral home that you want to visit, come a few days before the tour or stay a yep. few days after, and we'll make all the arrangements. And then in June Chris, of next speaking year. Speaking of, Christine Harrison is here. Hey, Christine. So excited to see her in October. Um, Chris, Christine, I mean, uh, you, you, you interrupted me and you got me <laughs> off my game. Man. I got a comment that I interrupted uh, too many times, Esther. So far, it's four to zero today. I'm winning. But anyway. I owe you five bucks. Okay. So in, in any case, <laughs> We also, in June, we're going to do resume our normal uh, West Coast trip. We'll be staying at Palo Saros and Alcamo Marina. And we do Palermo. We do all these, the Suggesta. We do all these great places over there. And I understand that my good pal B and Dawn uh, are going to be there along with their friends. So we already have, I believe, either four or six people on that one. But Paula said she can take another you know, because we use a bus over there. We don't have to bring a bus from over there. We could take another six people for next May. I mean, next June, June. over there. So those are the ones we have. Now, if there's interest, I want to do a golf tour because a golfing over here with, with, like we said last week with Francesco. So we can do independent golf uh, tours over here. Or do a few days of touring and yeah, then a few days yeah. of touring. So I'll be quite different. honest something with you. Different. I like to keep the uh, group very small because it's much more personalized. Yeah. We become a family. There's some people here who have been on our tours. Literally, they make lifelong friends. So I love that. Um, best kept secret. Uh, we've been flying for past 20 years. Aer Lingus, low cost, least amount of time. Boston to Dublin. Dublin. That is good, good Dublin, advice. Dublin, Dublin, Dublin. Uh, Ciao, Mizio from New Jersey. There's okay. a lot of assistance. Uh, Malta Americans is here. here. Nice Ooh. to see Malta is here. Okay, my cousin would like to participate in grape stomping. Do you know if that is possible in Sicily? No. I We went to a place uh, in uh, Piedmonte del Etna. 
last week. I remember Roberta when mm -hmm. I went to that place, but they didn't have the stomping of the grapes. They had the old the old mills that you could watch them do. You know the big wooden mill that goes around. I don't think that they can do that any longer. For health reasons. For health reasons. Yeah. 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 I mean, the vineyard we go to, there is the old building where they used to stomp on the grapes yeah. and sing Sicilian songs. And uh, our guide tells the whole story. He paints a beautiful picture of how uh, wine making was back then. But there's no stomping on grapes here. Uh, I so, stop on bugs a lot. I'll tell I you picked, that much. I picked this book up about Sicily from Charity Shop for less than a dollar. One page short reviews on books, one by John Wolfgang von Gauthier <laughs> in the years of Sicily from 1786 to 1788. What did Gauthier say? Okay. Well, wait a minute. What, I, I, what's so his favorite salmon? No, no. Come on. <laughs> what, what's his favorite salmon? Are you going to bust my balls like, no. the whole time? To have, visit, to have visited Italy yeah, and not know. having been to Sicily is like not having seen Italy at all. Because in Sicily lies the answer to everything. What a great <laughs> student she is. You see that? You see that? She's going to get five extra points from for that recitation. She did a hell of a job. Oh, there. boy. Oh by boy. By the way, last uh, week. Ciao lot... from Vienna. Welcome. Did you just interrupt me again? I owe you another dollar. Five <laughs> times. Anyway, <laughs> uh, last week, the last 10 minutes got truncated. Uh, the We lost, we got fuzzy. Last five right? minutes, yeah. Last five minutes, right? We couldn't figure out why until we both looked up in the sky and we figured out that Aetna, it was Aetna, right? Well, Aetna has been erupting all week. And the shows that she's been, last night she was hurling debris up. It was on the front page of La Cecilia. Tens of thousands of meters into the air. And the lava flow coming off the southeast side was just spectacular to look at. Remember? It looks like she's crying red. Oh, Beautiful, oh, right? It's We've just had a very unusual year of Aetna eruptions, starting around yeah, mid-February, yeah. right? right? We had we had about 20 explosions every 36 hours. It's been a very extraordinary period here. It's because Stromboli er erupted. The adjacent volcano uh, in the you know in the Mediterranean over there erupted, and it it, it caused it caused. Uh, our lady over here to erupt. And uh, man, what a show it's been putting on. Yeah. All right, Leonard, so listen to this. Buongiorno, do you still have the decorated donkey carts parading around Tarmina? Let me tell you about with musicians. Donkey First of all, if donkey. you are still just joining us, we did an entire episode about Sicilian carts and we talked about Sicilian mup uh, Muppets. <laughs> puppets. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> the lady. Muppets. I we talked that. about the Sicilian puppets and earlier. And one of our friends has one of the biggest collections of Sicilian carts and um, and Sicilian uh, puppets in on the island. And he is the one that usually has them in events and festivals. And he's uh, he had a, even a display up in Tarmina. Right now, Alfred, believe it or not, Giuseppe is having a display, and I believe it was Ragusa. So for a few weeks, he goes around the island. Nicest guy. Yeah. The Jafrida family is a terrific family. And those cards that they put together, you know, that, that's not put together by Acme Cot Company. Those are all done by skilled and ancient craftsmen that have passed on that tradition. See, everything is familiar, is family orientated, whether it's making a, uh, the, the puppets, whether it's making the, the cartatinos or the cots, father to son, son to grandson, etc. because the name is important. And did you know that the cots... When you look at the back of a card underneath it, they're signed. It's signed by the woodworker, it's signed by the painter, and it's signed by the uh, the metal worker, okay? Some of these cards can go for 100,000 euro. And the side panels, the one that have the beautiful depictions that Esther was talking about, those things can go for several thousand euro a piece, depending yeah. upon who the artist is, etc. So, I mean, those things are... They're, they're just beautiful to look at. They really are. They're really, really magnificent. Yeah. Magnificent. But you know, Giuseppe, the reason he started the cart museum, because his grandfather used to ride around in a cart and he used to uh, transport 
food, uh, transport and sell food and wine. So he decided in honor of his grandfather, he would start a collection of Sicilian cards. And let me tell you, they are breathtaking. He has an actual museum in Tre Castagni. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is in, during festivals, he also ha uses them for weddings, festivals, so uh, celebrations, and you can lease the um, people, I mean, you can lease the cards and uh, they'll even put, you know, get a horse, not donkey, a horse, uh, decorate the horse uh, and ride around. So it's it's a, a beautiful tradition. And unfortunately, it is a dying tradition here in Sicily. Sicilian cart making uh, was used here. You know, they made the carts. They used the carts uh, to carry not only foods and wines, but also people, right, on the hills. Can you imagine going up to Tarmina before there was roads or highways? You would take a donkey and a cart. The donkeys, you know, Peter Messina told us a story about his brother Rosario when they were living in Via Grande. The father used to send Rosario and his their donkey from Via Grande to... Uh, to uh, Catania to pick up something. I don't know what the heck it was. And they would go on the road, the dirt roads to Catania, and the donkey would know how to get there because where they stopped on the road is where they get fed. So the donkeys, yeah. they had strategic places to feed the donkeys. And those, those, those donkeys, you know, they're, they're strong. They can carry a lot of stuff. Okay, yeah. it's crazy about them. But Peter was telling me that story. Remember How old that? was his brother? I forgot. He was you know, he like was young, old. six well, years old. He was not six. He was like eight. Yeah, eight uh, or ten years eight, old. He was right, young. Right. There wasn't any roads in those days, though. I mean, you know, going to Via Grande was a lot of just dirt roads. And remember, after the war, um, people keep on thinking this just like, look like it does today. This place was destroyed after World War II between the earthquake in the early 50s in Messina and what the Allies did in their invasions over here, forget it. It knocked us back into the Ice Age practically here. I mean, the roads, I mean, there's still a lot of problems with roads. Remember that road uh, down by near us, Vampioleri? They yeah. didn't put down sidewalks <laughs> until like three or four years ago. It was all, you know, the road and then there was dirt for what, walking. What's very sobering is you could drive down the Autostrada and you, by Malta, Santa Stasia, and right at the exit, you see, you begin to see the old German pillboxes, those cement structures where the Germans would be, you know, with the machine guns and so forth. There are pillboxes still all over this island. There are burnt out uh, and bombed out buildings in Palermo and over a lot of places that were really, really never rebuilt as a result of the Allied bombing. So it's taken 70 years for Sicily to get back on its feet. Yeah. It really has. Uh, I love to see the guys and girls in tradition Sicilian clothes. Yes. I love that. You know, yeah. one of my favorite is during the before the festival of San Agatha, about a week before they have the beautiful celebrations and they have the girls dancing and the musicians. Uh, we also saw a beautiful um, celebration in Achi San Antonio. Remember that? Yes. They had the, the Sicilian girls all dressed up and the musicians playing and the Sicilian carts everywhere. When when is the uh, festival of San Antonio? Was in the summer. June. It's in June. I, yeah. I remember it was warm. It was in the summer. It was such a Anthony beautiful. Anthony made a comment about my cigar smoke. You know, here's a story about my cigar smoke. <laughs> I always want to sit where the smoke goes away from her. Okay, but she doesn't want to do that because she's producing the show and she doesn't know how to do it lefty. But whatever. It worked. So in any case, guess what? <laughs> Today I said, you know, that's it. <laughs> All right. So now, wait, wait, guess he, what? The smoke is blowing away from her. <laughs> wait, oh, what did I say? Day. What did I've I been say? saying that way. <laughs> How do I do it? What? Do your face again. I'm the producer, and I need to use my hands. And you tell me all the dumb stuff. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Wow, you're they, being very nice to me today, huh? Why? <laughs> Not at all. Alfred, it business. seems like the wind blows from right to left all the time, so you are on the right side for this. Anthony, moment. you know why? It because was... to our right is Etna, and the wind has been coming well, no, from good. Etna, okay? As opposed from the south, which is Setacusa, it's not coming that well, way. because it depends. A, two yeah. near Mota San Anastasia pillboxes. There are two, right? Yeah, right, Jimmy, right? Okay. There are two, right? Right, right um, off the exit. Sue. 
I've been to the Cart Museum in Terracini. I heard that there was one there too. It was beautiful this year. We'll visit the one in Catania. You have to come and see this one. All right. Ciao. Oh, we have new neighbors too on this side. We've got new neighbors over here. We've got new neighbors down, two new neighbors downstairs. Now all of a sudden it's been quiet for like eight months, over, over a few years over on that side. Now all of a sudden people are moving in. Here's what I do know. I like having people next to us because the people that are downstairs are very nice. She's a former worker, photographer for the United Nations. These people over here have three kids. So far, they haven't, you know, bothered me too much at all. The Police mother and father officer. are awesome people. So I like having young kids around me. Okay, I miss my grand. I miss my grandkids. Police officer. He's a police officer? Yeah. That's right. He works in the penitentiary. That's exactly right. But, you know, me, look, me looking at these little – I wish Jimmy Ingram was here with me because those peeps, Jimmy, I was going to give them – I want to give some of them to these kids next door. And I wish you were here with me to give them to them. Believe me, because the kids – somebody sent me some Tony. ding dongs and we gave them away to the kids. It was like – they were like – they almost had – I don't know. They were going crazy eating ding dong. They had never seen him before. Tony Patty, thank you for becoming Thanks, a Tony. member. Thanks, thank you Tony. for your support. I love my town's festa week uh, with traditional dancing on a movie in the piazza, fava and sausage, and of course the procession, which is all which I always walk in. That's beautiful. Love that. We're gonna have on uh, Friday. Esther was giving me the business today. She says, you know, all you've been doing is complaining about you, you want to have fun of tuna. Me? <laughs> you want to have tuna, not tuna in a can, tuna you know, fresh steak. tuna. So today she was in the market and she called me up and she said on the phone, I was waiting in the car. She goes, they have, they have uh, tuna steak. Tuna steaks on sale here, 16 euro 90 for a kilo. That's about what? That's about nine bucks a pound. You know, the, the, yeah. the red one. So I said to her, I didn't feel like eating them. Well, I, wait a sec. I, I, I go, like and eating. all I do is think about you. So I call him. Yes. Oh, you've been wanting tuna. You've been wanting tuna steak. So he didn't want it too. I want scalora. I want scalora. Oh, they have scalora. I don't want it. And then we're going to be running out of it. You know what it is? And I you're want to know. Want it. I want to know. I'm one of those idiots that want to know that they can get it. Okay. Not that I really want to eat it. <laughs> no, that's funny. No, if, if they have it there, so then I'm going to be super pissed when I'm going to go there and they're going to say, no, there's no more. Because the tuna follow the mackerel uh, in the yeah. cold waters. It's only. I got to tell you, weeks. the tuna was red, like dark, dark red, really, really fresh, really, really good. But you know, they're having a little bit of a shortage of tuna here because all the Japanese are buying it up for sashimi. Can you believe oh, that? Wait a minute. Uh, restaurants were even complaining about that. May I say something? No. The Japanese do not <laughs> buy the whole tuna. Let's get that squared away. What they do is around down where the neck is, they take that chunk for all sashimi. the way down for sushi. That's the part that gets cut off the uh, the tuna as soon as they catch it and bring it in. It's gone. It goes to auction. And then by the next day, it's in Tokyo at the fish market. The rest of the tuna gets cut up and sold. So that that piece, the delicacy piece there that they use for the, whatever it is, the, the what is it yeah. called? Shishumi? Uh, sushi, well, whatever. Uh, See you later. That yeah, goes. Yeah, but the restaurants have been And those fish get a lot of money. Right? Can I have some sympathy? Because he hasn't been nice to me today. Why? What does it say? I feel your pain. You haven't been nice to me today. Oh, I'm just, no, come on. I'm you. just kidding around. You want me to tell you a joke? Will that make you happy? No, ching ching. No, I want you to be I'll nice. I'll tell you my to famous me. joke. No, I want you to be nice to me. Ching I'll ching to nice. you guys, by the way. Thank now you I'm going to spending... get emails. Thank you for spending some time with us. You will. Now get some emails something. I was mean to you. You were mean to <laughs> you mean to Esther. Oh. You want to know something? I, I am who I am. Wait a minute. I, we I, love, I'm everyone not loves yet. you. Listen to me. Okay. I'm going to tell my can I tell my story now. Wait. Easter and Al, can you read? Pete, the uh, cost monthly you requested, it is one dollar and ninety nine cents uh, to join. If that's what you're saying. Yeah, it's a cup of coffee is what cup, it is. A month, a month. A month, okay. And you get like, for example, okay, we just bought a bunch of beautiful Sicilian postcards. Okay, we went in Catania. I, I picked up oh, like a whole suitcase full, right? And 
Uh, friends who are, uh, that's something that when I go home, I'm just going to throw, throw a bunch in an envelope and, and mail them to our friends over there. If you buy any of my books, which I decided to resell them again, because I'm going home in August, I can mail them myself, the three books for 19. Where can they find it? They can find it on my website, Alfred, thank you, alfredzapple.com. My last three books for $19, including shipping. But when I get home, I'll autograph them, assign them, and put some postcards in there. S stuff like that. I can do when Excellent. I go home. So we haven't been able to do that because we haven't been able to get home. So now we're kind of looking forward. And then when she goes home, by that time, the Trinacrias will be in. Or if we could, people want to buy the Trinacrias. Well, I'm also are. thinking about doing aprons. Aprons, too. These things the, uh, Aprons with the Sicilian um, yeah. map on it or some kind of motif. Believe so me, let me, so what would you guys be interested in from Sicily when both of us go home? Not let me know. heavy. Because it's just, yeah, just not do this ceramics. For no, forget no. Cera uh, ceramics. We have to ship, and we know places that will ship stuff. And also, by the way, wine. Our friends at the vineyard over here. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, at the vineyard, Constantino, Terra Constantino. They'll ship. They'll ship it right to the states. Your your, your wine for you. Diane, Sal, and I will join. Thank you very Thank very you, much. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate it. Just All right. press the button. Mm -hmm. Tell me story now. Yeah, tell your All story. Right. Now we're going to end the day on a high note, okay? A chuckle, okay? I love. I used to love to tell this Sicilian story. It's actually not a true story, but I'll embellish it to make it a true story because that's what lawyers do. We lie because our lips move. But in any case, it's a story about Guido, the Sicilian, who won the Mega Box in Massachusetts. Okay? <laughs> he won you know, the Mega Box. He won you know, millions of dollars. And all this guy wanted was was a new house. So he gets a contractor and he says, and I want a bigger house. I want a bigger house. And the guy says, okay, we, we, we can make you a big house. He goes, and in every room, I want I want one of those things you say. You, you, I can't, I just screwed the joke up. I can't, I can't tell you, forget it. I just screwed the joke up. I'll come back with this joke you next have week. To, you have to understand he's in rare form because he just got out from a nap. <laughs> tough, tough, tough. Um, I nap every day. Me and Churchill, okay, we and I feel good. And what's what's the, what's the matter with an old geezer like me? Whining, feeling good, whining. Uh, Diane <laughs> will send for the year instead of monthly. Thank you so much. We also have this thing called GoFundMe, where if you guys uh, can donate or contribute I love a little too, bit, Jimmy, then, I love you too, brother. Um, did you just interrupt? Yes. I'm really uh, Jimmy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> six to one. Six to one. Uh, I'll stop your whining. All right, so it's called GoFundMe, and I um, posted that Thank in the you, show Hazel. note as well. <laughs> whining. All right. I love that. Hmm? My mother used to use that word to me. My mother. Why don't you have another She drink? would say to me, you're whining. If you don't stop, I'm going to give you something to whine about. All right, did you guys <laughs> learn anything during this show? I hope you did. Um, we talked about puppets. We talked about carts. We talked about travel. What else do we have to tell them about travel? Oh, one thing, you know, people often ask, what are the rain periods? I would say uh, starting in November, what? November, rain period in Sicily. Someone asked. There's nothing wrong with coming in December. That's why we do our tours. November, I said. But wait a minute. In December, there's nothing wrong. I'm not going to count that as an interruption. <laughs> I'll count that as well, a 0.5 we, interruption. Well, let me ask you this. It's a little. It's not cold. The average temperature in, in, in December is between 50 and 55 degrees. In other words, it's not going to snow. However, we do not go up to Etna in December because the, the roads up there could be slick. So we don't do Etna. But there is nothing like Sicily in Christ for Christmas time. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says, the ambiance, the Christmas spirit, the the nativity scenes that every single solitary town has, they make it an art form. Uh the merriment in Caltigironi, the, the religion the Presipe in Caltigironi. is worth to come here just for that. And then we have now it's our nationally known. We have a nationally known Christmas party where we make sugu, where we make sausage. And scotada. And scotada. And, and uh, meatballs. And the alcohol flows. flows. 
and we sing Christmas carols right on my deck, and we have a great time. Uh, what's so Mama that's what we do. When we we want you to come and join us. What's Mama? I would love to have one of those child. Which one? This one, this one, or the one with the ceramic? Private message me. That would be great. Uh, Chow, Tony from the UK. I just saw Tony another Napoli. question. Um, great name. Do you need Naples coats in winter? When you go up to Etna, some of the higher elevations, yes. This year, I didn't use a coat, but like a heavy jacket, like you would in Boston or New York. No, but you need some kind of a yes, coat. You need, a for, coat. You need some kind of a coat. And excuse me. And the other thing is uh, to be prepared to wear layers. Um, and especially when you go, you know, if you're out all day and maybe warm during the day at night, for sure, have some uh, layers. There's no frost. There's no snow. It, there's no freezing temperatures. OK, it's like uh, in New England, it would be New England weather in, say, October. It would be when the frost is on the pumpkin. If you know that little poem. Do you know that poem, Esther? No. One of the uh, days wait, have a do you guys do uh, have you, me, and Sicily shirts? Yes, we do. Anthony uh, messaged me about that. We do. And they're have in the some. states, too. And they're right in now. the sa states, exactly. Uh, and they're good quality ones, too. I love mine. Uh, I'm so excited for Fred. Fred's going to be here in September. All right, Fred. So, so it will be so. It's very is he nice from, and warm. From he's he's going to be. He's is. He is. Fred, can you do me a favor? Press me. You know what? Oh, I want to get a God. hat. I want to get a it's, hat from from uh, Scotland. From, yeah. You know, like the hats that I wear, not the summer hats, the other ones. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll send you the money. I want you to get me a hat from Scotland if you could. I've heard Tarmina's great. We spent New Year's in Tarmina one year. It was spectacular. So beautiful. So nicely decorated. Um, we had a red. Uh, you know, set menu for the hotel the and there Excelsior was music hotel. and yep. there wasn't fireworks that year, but that's fun. But what happened? Tell Janet. Hi, what? you guys. Swap places. Great to see you. We'll catch up later. It's kind of funny. Did you, did you also notice that we swapped the uh, the things over here? Because, we did? Yeah, because she likes her wine, so I put the grape one behind her. And I like the lemon, so I, so I even switched those today. See, this is what you call attention- to detail. Okay, Joya says, does it snow in Palermo? In higher elevations, yes, maybe it does. Maybe Monte Palmo maybe. No, yeah, in yeah. higher, there's, yeah. Diana, the Albanese, it's all, there's, there's, there's all, all there. those all those places. Yes, I mean, it a does. little tiny skin Not, chip. It, no, no, they get some significant snows on the higher elevation. They it's, do? Excuse me. Yes, they do. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, I know that poem Diana <laughs> says, well, I do too. Who I'm knows that like, poem? I know, I'm just Jimmy. Breaking. Jimmy knows that poem? No, Diane Fiorentino. Diane, that that's a great poem. That's a great poem, Diane. But I, I can't say that because Essie has this thing about me using, you know, naughty phrases and naughty words and stuff like that. I do that. You make it a sport. It's a sport here. What? You using naughty words. So what? <laughs> <laughs> All dresses as Babbo Natale. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Chrissy. No, I no. don't get mad. I get even. Revenge is a dish, Chicha. Didn't you? Best to, served cold. Didn't you? Um, I was to? never Baba Natale. It's all things to sing in. I used to hire the Chichu of the uh, Tasca. Frankie Tasca, God rest his soul. He was the best. Um, the I'll best. get to you out from Scotland and I'll get you a Jimmy hat. They are fun as well. That's great. And okay. I will wear it proudly. Okay. I will. You know that my son Matthew, my daughter Jen married a Scotsman. Uh, uh, J.R. McCormiskey is the name. The whole family came over from Scotland. The grandmother did. And I remember at the wedding, they all had on the kilts. Even my son Matthew had a kilt on. And he asked me, he says, Dad, do I have to shave my legs? <laughs> You're kidding me. That's a joke for heaven's sakes. Uh, my hometown, oh. Locati in the Madonia Mountain, gets lots of snow. Yeah, a lot of those in Madonia the Madonia Mountains. Yeah, the Nebrodi, gets snow. the Nebrodi yeah. Mountains. Too. So a lot of those. Yeah, places the higher get. elevation. She's right. She's okay. right. I'm wrong. Uh, okay. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, Wait a minute. I have hmm? some more important stuff. To, I'm full of important stuff today, and you won't let me. You won't let me get my important stuff up. <sighs> 
Let's congratulate a couple of people. Can I congratulate people now? I want to congratulate yeah. my pal, Johnny Grasso. It's his birthday today. Okay. Who else did you want to congratulate? That's it. You have nobody that you know that has a birthday today? In you fact, getting... a lot of people. How about Mike? What about Mike Costello? Was it Mike Costello? Who's the person from Pian uh, from Isola Della No, Fender? no, no. That's something else. Oh, okay. I want anybody who has a birthday today that I'm forgetting about. Lots of people have birthdays. One out of every, uh, did you know that one out of every 39 people that you will meet in your life has the same birthday as you? It's not one out of every 365. You would think that that's it, but it's not that. Anybody who has a birthday today or an anniversary today or today is a day of sp special significance, we're with you. <laughs> we're in solidarity with you. Power to the people. All right, on that note, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Hope you enjoyed this. Love share it with a friend, share it with family, and yeah. we'll see you guys on Bye, Sunday. Jimmy, Jimmy Ciao. Ciao.